Uh, hi everyone. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself. Uh, and my name is Ragnar Fjölnesson. I come from uh, from Iceland. Um, have any of you ever been to Iceland? Not yet. Do you have you ever heard of anyone who went to Iceland? Yes. Yeah. Did they like it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so. I moved to uh, Heidelberg about four or five months ago, um, and I moved because uh, my girlfriend, she got a great job in Heidelberg, and I was able to move as well because my job, um, I'm the co-founder of a, of a company, a startup, that was started about two years ago, or almost three years ago now, and we, uh, we've we been building a company now for, for this time, starting from just the two, just two guys with uh, a stupid idea uh, into something that uh, we're quite proud of and in the middle of now of, of raising some money to take the company to the next stage to become sort of uh, scalable and ready for more customers and things like that. Um, but just quickly before we move the map, Iceland is a very big place but not with a lot of people. There's about 320,000 people who live in Iceland. That's about the size of uh, Landkreis Fulda, if anyone knows that area. Yeah. My girlfriend is from there, so I know that there are more than 320,000. Uh, yeah, it's probably also smaller than, than Mannheim. But from Iceland come a lot of both very creative people and very um, hardworking people. You've got very good musicians like Björk and Sigurós and other names you might know. And then we also do a lot of really good startups. Um, for example, uh, one of the biggest ones, uh, a company called QuizUp, I'm not sure if you know it, but they've raised over $50 million uh, dollars in capital from Sequoia and very big venture capitalist funds in the US. And they do this like mobile app for quizzes. There's a similar concept in Germany. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's very popular here in Germany. Yeah. But <laughs> Yeah, something like that. But they compete very heavily against each other, but they are very, very big in the US. Another good company is like um, a company called Menica, and they are working with all the German banks, for example, for providing um, like login so you can view the statistics of how you use your money, like a personal mobile uh, application, so you can see all the different things that you spend your money on. And they've got you know all the German banks, all the Spanish banks, and a very big big company. So we're doing we're doing quite a lot of things and uh, have a lot of good people, but we are not very not a, not a lot of people, it's very small. Um, so just a little bit about um, what we do. And, and so I, I'm 24 years old and when I started the company I was 21. I just got out of, just got out of um, university. I, I studied um, engineering and went uh, in, in, and I studied in Glasgow in Scotland where I moved when I was very young. I think I was only 17 when I moved there. Um, and then we started the company after I, I met um, Arnar, who's a lot older than me. He's uh, 45, he's got three kids, he's got a mortgage, he's got three cars, and you know, a lot of bills to pay. When he decided to uh, sell his, his company and, uh, and uh, quit completely and take a lot of risk and start a company with, with this idiot. And we, we um, started just the two of us, uh, and we decided to do it 50-50. Um, so we both put a, a little bit of money in, up front, and then um, then uh, we started, and uh, we were mostly doing like consulting projects, or what what we would call bootstrapping. You would just get doing things to make sure you survive the next month. It didn't really matter what it was, you know. We did a lot of websites, we did a lot of consulting works for post offices and like st stuff that you know we, we would never do but we just needed to keep things going we just needed to get money in we need to hire people we need to you know fund ourselves and um, we thought we've been doing that now for for a very long time but at the same time we've been building the vision of what we can't want the company to be um, you know there are two types of ways you can create a company you can do it like this, like we are doing, we could bootstrap ourselves and just try to make money any way we can, work for the post offices and work for the banks and things like that, uh, doing any types of web development or anything. Or you could go in and try to get a, an investor right away. And that investor is going to take a lot of risk. It's going to spend a lot of money doing things that, you, you know, finding out whether this is a good idea or not. So it's just, you know, it's, it's difficult pitch. It's difficult to sell that. 
So we decided to do the bootstrapping thing. And we decided to focus our energy on this company called Salesforce. Um, have any of you heard of Salesforce before? Yeah. So Salesforce is like uh, the SAP for America, for the US. They're like the, the first company to like really convince very big, big businesses to move data into the cloud. So before they were, they were, they were basically nobody else selling this type of, uh, of software to companies. And we just sort of piggybacked on it. We just saw that this is a great company. It's growing amazingly. You know, when we started working with them in 2007, there were like 4,000 employees. I think now they have over 20,000. Um, it's one of the, the biggest sort of success stories in the, in the stock markets and blah, 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 blah. And we just saw that it was a huge opportunity if we would follow them and try to focus on their technology and do something special with it. And what we ended up doing was building a, a, a platform for travel companies. Uh, on top of their infrastructure. So we were able to go to a, a customer, a, tra a big travel company, think of like TUI or Thomson or like these sort of bigger companies who had been spending, you know, 2 million euros or 2 billion euros for the last 10 years uh, in infrastructure that is already outdated. It's already old. And um, we, we are able to then provide them with a sort of full solution that is cloud-based, it's mobile-based, it has a lot of social features, things like uh, connecting more of the sort of consumer stuff which we see on Facebook and which we see with our mobile applications with enterprise and with, you know, the sort of typical uh, travel company selling things to consumers and things like that. And that's a very big, big uh, value proposition and it's a very difficult thing to, to tell companies that they should switch. So if you go to someone who spent two billion euros on their infrastructure and you tell them you should throw it away and switch. It's very, very difficult. And it uh, takes a long time. But it's it's working quite well. And at the moment, we have five very big customers using the platform um, and preparing ourselves now to get more, uh, more companies uh, to use it. We are eight employees now. And we're still just sort of bootstrapping. Just, you know, we're doing a lot of other projects, but mostly it's only our own projects. We start to make some money from that finally. And the next step is sort of going after um, what you would call like institutional investors, getting money from venture capitalists and getting money from those who, who are willing to take a risk on us. But I think it's better that we do it now than we did it three years ago. Because if we did it three years ago, I would not probably, you know, it's, you know be in a ditch somewhere because we would have not succeeded. <laughs> we learned so much in the three years that, uh, you know, I don't think any amount of money or any amount of, people around us could have changed that. You learn a lot more when you're hungry. And we've been very hungry for the last three years. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go into the details of the, I'm not going to go into the details of any of this um, because it's only a short presentation. Um, but, you know, the customers that we've been working with, that's also a really important part of this. If you're gonna build a business, you need to get customers right away. And if it's a B2B business, then you need to get um, a dedicated customer who can do something really, um, who can really help you and give you feedback. And if it's a B2C customers, then you need to get, I think it's different. You need to get a lot of people and see if someone sticks, you know, just throw a bunch of things on the wall and see what sticks. And these are the companies that are helping us do what we, you know, what we do because They've been doing this for 30 years, some of them, and they know this a lot better than us. We just bring the technical skills, they have the industry skills. And then we just mix that together and, and create a, a platform which allows them to do things a lot more better than they used to. Um, I think that's basically it. That's what we are doing. Um, I'm thinking if, yes, there's one thing everyone should know in here, uh, and it's very important. Uh, in the next two days, there's going to be a very big volcanic eruption in Iceland. <laughs> uh, I'm not joking. So yeah, no. you've heard about it. Yes. Yeah. So my, my best uh, friend will go to Iceland tomorrow. <laughs> she's so lucky because she's going to get blown to pieces. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean it's not dangerous at all. Um, I've when I was six years old, I I drove through one of these. Like we uh, the, the we, we have one road in Iceland. It's called Road Number One. <laughs> it, it, it goes round the island one road and when there's an eruption um, I can actually just show you on the map again okay. so 
I don't know why it's green. It, it, it shouldn't be green here on the map. It should be very white because this is a glacier. This is the largest glacier in Europe. And this is where all the eruptions happen. And now, at this moment, there is one here in this area. And there have been 3,000 earthquakes in the last three days in that area. So it's just, com it's just trampling this area. And the la when I was six years old, there was an eruption that was in this area here when I was driving between this distance. So my, I'm, from, I'm from a very small farm, which is located here. The next supermarket is 60 kilometers away. We still have the fastest internet in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense, I know, but and we pay a lot of money for it. So, yeah, but um, and um, I was driving this uh, with my p uh, parents, six years old, and seeing a, a, a volcano erupt is like the most scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. But it's not dangerous. <laughs> No, not, not unless you're standing like next to it, but <laughs> seeing it from a distance is not dangerous. But you, it's like it's like huge lightnings coming out of the air. But it's not lightnings; it's like fire and magma and, and shit. So it's 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 quite cool to see it. And I, you know, your friend will probably see it. She's very lucky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in the next two days, I'm pretty sure it will start to erupt, and that means the flight flight scope may go down. So plan accordingly. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.